Cheers, guys. Thanks for the warm welcome. People tend to be a little bit disappointed sometimes when I come bounding on stage. When I don't tell them that they're going to Hogwarts. <laughs> None of you are wizards. <laughs> uh, I'll be completely honest with you. I used to do a totally different opening joke. But I could never memorise the fucking numbers from Lost. So <laughs> tell you a little bit about me. Beginning of this year, I lost my job. I had to move back in my nan. And my nan's from a place called Croxteth, have you heard of us? Yeah. Probably in the fucking echo. <laughs> uh, our most famous resident is, of course, Wayne Rooney. A lot of people think that's a big deal, being the most famous person to come from Croxteth. And it kind of is, till you realise the second most famous person to come from Croxteth is a smackhead who went viral on YouTube <laughs> after getting her hand stuck trying to rob a fucking post box. <laughs> I know, it is a shit council estate, but I've been living on my own, so I thought things might have gotten better, and they haven't. I knew I was back in Crocky when I walked out my nan's front door, and I was greeted by the spectacle of a 53-year-old man riding a bike with no hands. Because he'd freed them up to roll a joint. Being pulled along by three Jack Russells. called Stallone, Springsteen, and Rambo. <laughs> and I'm looking at this like, Jesus Christ. All right, Dad. <laughs> Kidding, obviously, I'm from Croxteth. Like Wayne Rooney, I don't know who my fucking dad is. <laughs> Worst part of it, though, is my nan's house is right by a school, so we get all the noise and the traffic and the kids. And twice a day, I see this one young mum on the corner outside ours, Pink leopard print shell suit. Bright orange fake tan. Hair and curlers. Looks like she's going on an undercover mission in a Salvador Dali painting. <laughs> and she'll be screaming at the top of her lungs. Tracy, Leanne, Tasha, Christabel, Marie, Louise, Siobhan, Kendall, Brianna, Destiny, Chastity. <laughs> Hope, Avril, Safira, Beyonce. Get here, now! And one kid comes running round the corner. <laughs> so I don't know about you guys, but I've noticed in the last few years, it's tougher than it's ever been to be fat. Especially since thin people invented diabetes. <laughs> you know it was you. Who else would give us a disease you can treat with an emergency chocolate bar? <laughs> and no one even wants to call you fat anymore in the politically correct world. They'll call you something like bubbly, fluffy, or chunky. And that's thin people using coded language to take the piss. Because those words are more regularly used to describe chocolate, cake, and peanut butter. The worst offender, though, is everyone familiar with the shop called Giacomo? If you're not, it's the shop that sells everything fat men need, except dignity. I mean, I've got problems with Giacomo, because people always say, like, oh, you shouldn't try buy M plus size clothes, you should slim down into regular clothes. Okay, but what do you want me to wear in the meantime? Would my fatness be more less offensive if I was trolling around naked? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, but, and I've got specific problems with the Giacomo over there in Liverpool 1, because it's on the second floor. <laughs> First day I go in there, I'm just looking for jeans. This guy comes up to me. Hello, I'm going to be your stylist for today. And I'm like, slow down, mate. When you're this size, it's not about style, it's about containment. <laughs> I just want jeans. He goes, would burgundy chinos be acceptable? I said, have the ever. <laughs> just show me your plain black jeans. So he takes me over to my section, and in Giacomo, my section is labelled husky. 
Exactly, fucking husky. Do I look like I can run for 18 hours a day pulling a fucking sled? And what's the one benefit people say you get being fat? That you're harder to kidnap. <laughs> what you're telling me there is that I'm the human trafficking equivalent of a Great Dane. <laughs> a lot of people want to take me home, but they don't have the car space and can't afford the food bill. <laughs> well, you know, I was realizing, I was getting the signs this year that it was maybe time to lose weight. You get these little moments like stepping into a lift and the overweight alarm going off. <laughs> uh, it's a lift for 50 people. <laughs> Getting to the top of a hill and thinking, fuck it, I'm gonna roll down this bastard. <laughs> and when I was in Giacomo, I said to the guy, what waistband would you recommend for someone my size? And he said, gastric. <laughs> So, you know, I thought I'll sign up with Weight Watchers because they say they're here to help fat people. But they also sell their own range of cakes. <laughs> which is a bit like cake methadone. Just makes me want the real thing. <laughs> but even Weight Watchers are taking the piss. Before you fill any forms out, tell them how much you weigh, how much you want to lose, anything like that. First question they ask you is, have you accepted cookies? It's followed me all my life, this shit. I had a goth phase when I was a teenager and I had to give that up. Everywhere I went, thin people making the same lame joke. Here he comes. Vampire the Buffet Slayer. <laughs> Cheers, guys. I'm in my garden.